So I want to return to a related report, uh, Renee, that you produced for Democracy Now! about how FEMA responded to immigrants in Houston after Hurricane Harvey. Half a year after Hurricane Harvey, many homeowners who faced heavy flooding are still recovering with little or no help from FEMA, especially immigrants. To talk to some of them, I meet up with Chele, an organizer with the Workers' Defense Project. You can still see, like, a lot of uh, mud, you know, on the streets. He takes me to a working-class neighborhood built near the intersection of the waterways of Green's Bayou and Hall's Bayou. So this is like the bayou nearby? We drive down streets named Lake Forest Boulevard and Lake Park Drive. Most of the homeowners here, you know, they are uh, construction workers or working general uh, labor. Uh, many un undocumented, uh, particularly, have put homes in here uh, because, you know, the prices, uh, you know, were low, but now they're going to sink and they're going to be under the water again. Some of the houses still look destroyed from flooding, with visible water lines. They're interspersed with fully restored houses and others in various states of repair. <laughs> One of the first residents we meet is Alma, an immigrant from Mexico, who shows us her house that flooded with three feet of water during the storm. Everything got damaged. Beds, fridge, stove in the living room. Everything. We threw everything away. Is the house damaged still, or is it fully repaired? It's so-so, because we just fixed two bedrooms where my 15-year-old daughter and me and my husband sleep, and the kitchen. Uh, we're curious if uh, people have heard from FEMA and what that experience was like. Oh, yes, they helped. It took a long time, but they did help us, thank God, and the expectors were nice to us. Alma tells us they used a gift card from her church to buy drywall and insulation so her husband could start to repair the house before their FEMA check arrived. Was the inspector bilingual? El inspector era bilingüe? Mm. He spoke a little bit of Spanish, but not much. Down the street from Alma, we stopped to look at one of many houses that seem abandoned at first. I remember this home. It was missing uh, part of the front uh, wall. Now it looks like it's covered by wood, and there's a new door. I looked inside, and there's no walls. There's just the, uh, the two by fours. It looks like there are things like someone is living there. According uh, to FEMA, um, they are saying that these homes are habitable. You know, the way they look, they don't look habitable um, to me or to any human being. Across the street, we meet a man named Ricardo, a Mexican immigrant who's unloading construction material from his van into his house, which flooded with more than a foot of water during Hurricane Harvey. I ask him what was damp. Um, pues, uh, practically todo. Uh, que practically everything. I had to remove four feet of sheetrock from the floor. Piso. Can you tell us what happened when FEMA came? Really, they never came. Really, I only spoke with them once on the phone, and they asked me for my social security and said there was no help for those who don't have a social security. Can he describe the impact of not having FEMA help? He says that for him, uh, it feels like it would be the same because there are other people who are much worse than him and have gotten aid, and they're still you know, not fully recover and they're, you know, at a worse state. Um, so, but when he, he's been hurt, you know, economically. Como económico, como sus ahorros? Pues mis ahorros. Okay, prácticamente. So, yeah, so his uh, savings, you know, he spent uh, many of his savings away in recovering. Y haciendo yo mismo el trabajo. And doing the work himself. After we leave Ricardo, we go around the corner to meet Jocelyn Ramos, an immigrant from El Salvador who moved back into her house not long after it suffered heavy flooding from Harvey. She lives there with her husband, two relatives, and her children, eight-year-old son Gerardo and three-year-old daughter Madeline, who has special needs. 
Jocelyn says FEMA later helped pay for a hotel room, but the family had to move back into the house before it was repaired. We then came back to the house the way it was. My children kept getting sick a lot because my baby girl suffers from asthma and her lungs don't work properly. My eight-year-old son also has asthma. I had to bring them to the doctor very often. He even gave me a letter so I can take it to FEMA because he said that our house was not livable. I spoke with FEMA and they told me that they could not pay for the hotel because my house was indeed livable. Did the FEMA inspector come to the house? El inspector de FEMA llegó, vino a la casa. Sí, vino. Yes, he did come to inspect, but he took only from five to ten minutes. He was only here a few minutes. He was American and did not speak Spanish. So he came and only checked the front of the house. He didn't go to the bedrooms or the bathrooms. He didn't go anywhere. When Jocelyn shows us the progress she and her husband have made so far, each room in her house looks about half ready to live in. Many windows are still being installed, including in the bedroom her children share. I ask her if she plans to keep living here, and she answers, Sí, claro que sí. Yes, of course. I need to keep working to make money and keep going because we came here from our countries that are not as good as here to find a better future here. It is difficult, but not impossible. Reporting in East Houston, I'm Renee Feltz for Democracy Now! And, Renee, finally, we have just 20 seconds, but FEMA's response to these immigrant homeowners, a number of them with U.S.-born children. Well, these U.S.-born children are living in horrible conditions in some of the homes. It still smelled like mold when I went there. The mold is going away, but in many cases, there's no windows installed in their bedroom yet. Uh, these are, uh, I wanted to distinguish, uh, compared to other post-storm situations, these are longtime residents. Some of them have lived 5, 10, 20 years in Houston. They have U.S. citizens. So it's something that FEMA needs to address. Well, we want to thank you for that excellent report, Renee Feltz, Democracy Now! producer and reporter. And thanks to Chile Iglesias. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks so much for joining us.